Ranger Bill, warrior of the woodland, struggling against extreme odds, traveling dangerous trails, showing rare courage in the face of disaster. In the air. On horseback. Or in a screaming squad car. Ranger Bill, his mind alert, a ready smile, unswerving, loyal to his mission. And all this in exchange for the satisfaction and pride of a job well done. It's quarter to seven, fellas. Fellas, the meeting will come to order. I'm glad so many of you like the idea of beginning to read books together for the first 15 minutes of our meeting. Sometimes I guess we all get so busy with school and sports and meetings all the time that we don't have much time for reading for fun. And, well, we kind of miss out on a lot. Yeah, Henry, that book, Black Beauty, we started last week, is really good. I wish they put it on TV. Oh, uh, what a joker. <laughs> well, at least you like the story, Ken. What's so funny? I said it was okay. We only put aside the first 15 minutes for the reading, fellows. And we've got lots to do tonight. So if there aren't any special announcements... Henry, Henry, there's something I'd like to say. Oh, why, sure, Mike, go ahead. Well, well, some of you in my Sunday school class know already, but I'd like to tell the club that last Sunday I became a Christian. Boy, yes. that's swell. That's great. Oh. Most of you know my dad and how he feels about religion and, and some of the things I used to say, too, but... Underneath, I didn't feel right about how I was. And, and Miss Wilson, well, she's my Sunday school teacher. She was really swallowing me and, and never got mad at me. She helped me, and so did some of you. I just want to say thanks. And, well, I'm going to do my best for the Lord. Uh, Mike, uh, we're, we're really glad that you've decided to follow the Lord. And thanks for getting up and telling the whole group. That was swell. Yeah, that was wonderful. Now, if we're all set... Let's continue with our reading of Black Beauty. Let's see. Uh, Kenny, it's your turn to start. Well, see you next week. See you next week. Uh, Mike, if you wait till I lock up, I'll walk you as far as my corner. Swell, Henry. There. Tight as a drum. That was sure a good meeting, Henry. We can thank you for part of it. You were the one who picked out Black Beauty for us to read. Well, it's about horses, and you know how I love horses. <laughs> you sure do. Too bad you don't have one on your farm. Well, I've been wishing that since the first horse I ever saw. I guess you don't really need one on a chicken farm. Oh, I don't know. If I had a horse, I could sure get around better. It'd help with the chores a lot, too. We've got a lot of property... I have to check the fence and the gates at night and, and walk into town for the meal every day. It's a mighty long walk to any of the fellows down the road when I go to see them. Well, maybe you could use a horse after all. Boy, at the station, we take the ranger horses for granted so much, I never think about them. Well, I'd sure like to be a ranger, have my own horse, and boy... Boy, you are horse crazy. There's a lot more to being a ranger than just horses. Mm, I know. Anyway, I go over to Cal's ranch a lot. He lets me right in the corral with him when they're breaking new ones in. Is it ever neat? You wouldn't think a sheriff would be so interested in horses, but Cal sure is. Bill says for a hobby, he's going to have a full-time job on his hands if it gets any more horses. Mm, give me a hobby like that. Well, this is where I turn off. You sure you want to come over in the morning before school and help me pin up those travel posters for our next club meeting? Sure. You can't hold them up and tack them on the wall at the same time. That takes two people. Swell. See you in the morning, then. Okay. Night. Boy. 
Boy, that jam smells good, Ma. It should. It's your favorite kind, raspberry. Mmm. <laughs> Ike, what did you do at club? We're reading Black Beauty. <laughs> you and horses. Honestly, Mike, you should think about something else once in a while. Horses, horses. Apparently he does think of something else once in a while, Mother. I uh, took the eggs into town this afternoon and heard that my son, of course, I didn't know a thing about it, has got religion. Dad, I... I... What his dad says isn't good enough for him. He knows a lot better than his dad. He's had his sin saved and all that junk. Dan, it'll pass. Leave the boy alone. Not when he gets an idea into his head at once. All we ever could get him to talk about was horses. I reckon now it'll be this religious stuff. Dad, Dad, please, I won't talk about it, honest. I don't want to make him mad. But I know there's a God, Dad. I know it. And and being a Christian makes a person right with God. Well, you know something that uh, I don't? Mike, um, I got some wool in town today. Thought I might make you a sweater. Just uh, what makes you so sure there's a God, young oh, man? Oh, dear. Well, Dad, I prayed to him and... He answers my prayers. Mm, like what? Oh, Dan, really? Now, this has gone far enough. Now, just a minute, Mother. I think we ought to get to the bottom of this. What prayers did uh, God answer, Mike? Well, well, I asked him to forgive my sins, and, and I know he did. Ha, <laughs> plain imagination. Now, listen, son. I got an idea. Yeah, I, I got a, a real good idea. Yeah, Dad... If you're not afraid to prove that there's a God, uh, why don't you try asking him for something you can see, like, uh, like a horse? Dan! Well, he's wanted one for years, hasn't he? Surely it isn't too hard for God to give him one little horse, is it? Well, son? Yeah, yeah, but, but, Dad, Dad, God doesn't hand out things anybody just feels like asking for. He takes care of people's souls and... Well, if they need things, he sees that they're taken care of, but but asking for a horse... I thought you'd back down. You know right well there isn't a god, and there's no use asking the thin air for a horse. That's not true. There is a god. He could give me a horse if he wanted to. All right, then. Let's see him do it. Mike, you go on upstairs. Both of you are saying too much. Now go. Well, Mike, what about it? You afraid to give your God the test? No. Okay, then you just ask. Now I'll fix the fence back of the barn first thing tomorrow so your horse won't get out after it floats down from heaven. These are going to look super for our around-the-world meeting next week. I'm sure glad you could come this morning to help. Yeah. Yeah, they look okay, Henry. I wanted to do this tomorrow night after supper. I sure hate getting up this early. There. But I've got to help at the church tomorrow... tomorrow night. Hand me that hammer, will you? Sure. What are you going to do? Cook? Oh, if I did, they'd have a funeral instead of a business meeting afterward. No, I'm going to be setting up tables and chairs. Oh. <laughs> you know, Mike, I think this is just too early for you. You're still asleep. The last one. No, it's, it's not that. What's the matter, Mike? Oh, my dad and I had quite a talk last night after I got home. About you being a Christian? Yeah. Yeah, he said if I really believed there was a God, I, I wouldn't be afraid to prove it. Prove it? How? By praying for a horse. Oh, he was just joking, wasn't he? Nope. What did you say? Well, I tried to tell him what Miss Wilson said, that prayer wasn't for asking God for things you want, well, like a horse or, or new clothes or stuff. That it was to talk to God for your soul, but, but he said I was scared to ask for something I could see because that would prove that God was just my imagination. Oh, Mike... Yeah, my ma was mad at both of us. That's too bad, Mike. I'm really sorry your folks feel that way. It's pretty awful. That's why it's just got to work. What's got to work? 
Well, I told my dad I wasn't afraid to ask God for a horse, and now he's just got to give me one. And, Henry, I don't even care about having a horse anymore. I just want my dad to know that there is a God. <laughs> so you see, fellas, there was this farmer trying to sell his horse. <laughs> it was a real old nag. <laughs> Come on, old timer. We're supposed to be leaving for lunch. <laughs> well, just hang on a minute. And the feller who was uh, looking her over asked the farmer to exercise her a bit. Well, sir, he put her through her paces all right, and the old nag was pretty windy, let me tell you. And the farmer says to the buyer, <laughs> Stumpy, you got one minute to finish. <laughs> and the farmer says to the buyer, Ain't you got a pretty coat, though? You see, he wasn't going to pay any attention to her gasping for breath. And the buyer says, <laughs> eh, coat's all right, but I sure don't care for the pants. <laughs> hey, get it? Pants. <laughs> Stumpy, when are you going to come to the end of your supply? There must be an end to those jokes. <laughs> Bill, you're still here. I thought you'd be gone to lunch. There, that's just how the horse was. A panting, Bill. Horse? What's the matter with you, Henry? Uh, you allergic to horses all of a sudden? Bill, I've got to, to talk to you. I ran all the way from school. Well, sit down, pal. Uh, Bill, it's about Mike Baker. What about him? Well, you know, I told you last Sunday he became a Christian. Mm-hmm. I'm really glad. But, Bill, something awful has happened. What's happened, Henry? Well, Mike's dad is really upset because of it. His dad always says that there wasn't a God, and last night he dared Mike to prove that God exists. Just how does he think he's going to do that? You know how long Mike has dreamed of having a horse? Oh, no, I hope he didn't. Yes. Mr. Baker said Mike could prove to him there was a God by asking God for a horse. And if Mike gets one, that will prove it. Well, Bill, don't you think that's unfair? Sometimes, Henry, it isn't easy to see how God is going to work just by the surface of things. I don't get it. You're right about it seeming unfair of Mr. Baker to make Mike put God to a test. You and I know, and even Mike knows that God is no Santa Claus who just gives us anything we think we want any time we want it. His love is better than that. He gives us what's best for us, and that's not always what we ask for. Well, sure, but all this talk isn't going to help Mike. He told his dad he would pray for a horse. Mm -hmm. And the terrific thing about it is that Mike told me that he didn't care about having a horse anymore at all. He just cared about showing his dad that God does answer prayer. Henry, I don't know what God is going to do about this, but I'm sure he's going to look after it better than either of us could. Now, I think the thing for us to do is to help Mike pray that his father will change his mind about God. That's something that we can do. I guess you're right, Bill. I don't know what I expected. I ran all the way here from school. I felt so awful about it mm -hmm. all. It's a hard test for a Christian as new as Mike. Yeah, but somehow I feel a lot better about it now. I'm really interested in seeing what God will do. Let's pray about it, shall we, before you go back to school, huh, Henry? Yeah, Bill, that's a good idea. Hi, Mike. Where are you going? Over to church. This is the night I set up chairs for the supper, remember? Oh, yeah. Want to come along? I can't. I got to get home. Chores. Mike, I thought I'd tell you that Bill and I are praying about your dad. 
Thanks, Henry. He fixed a fence today. What fence? Well, the one behind the barn. It's going to be for the horse, and so it can't run away. Oh. You know, Henry, I didn't want to pray for a horse at first, but now that I've started, I really feel that God's going to work it out. You know, he knows my dad is just waiting to see, doesn't he? He sure does, Mike. Well, whatever happens, I know he won't let me down. I know it. Well, I, I got to get home now. So long, Henry. So long, Mike. Henry, Henry, can I give you a lift? Oh, hi, Cal. No, thanks. I'm just going across the road to church. I hope you're not cooking the dinner tonight. Oh, that's an old joke, Cal. No, I'm just setting up tables. Yeah, well, I'll be over in lots of time to eat. I'm just on my way downtown. Thought you might need a lift. Thanks anyway. Wasn't that Mike Baker you were talking to? Yes. He's a fine boy. Comes over at the ranch all the time to see the horses. He sure loves them. Yeah, he sure does. Yeah, well, I got to go. See you later, Henry. Keeping busy at the sheriff's office these days, Cal? <laughs> yeah, you bet. Been so busy, I haven't even been home for dinner for the last three nights. Oh. I've really been looking forward to this church dinner. It's the one night I knew I'd have time to take time out to eat a decent meal. Oh, man, you must be rushed. What's been happening? I thought Naughty Pine was settling down to a real quiet spell for a while. Ranger office just been taking care of routine work. The pastor rolls bill? Yeah, thanks. Okay. Well, as a matter of fact, it hasn't been the law enforcement that's kept me hopping. Don't tell me, Cal. I know. That stable of yours. <laughs> You're right, Bill. <laughs> I guess I've let it get a little out of hand. I've got two new coats now. And on top of all the rest, I just don't know where I'm going to put them. You'd make a lot of money on them if you could bear to part with them. Oh, no, they're too young to sell for quite a while yet. Oh, and in the meantime, I've got troubles. Well, what does Betty think of all this? Well, she warned me that we were running out of room. I guess she's getting a little lonely. I have to spend so much time with the horses. <laughs> uh, but, Bill, you should see them. They're beauties. I think I will come over one of these days, Cal. I'd like to see your ranch. Fine, fine. I know Betty would love to have you stay for dinner. Well, thanks, Cal. I'd enjoy that. Say, Bill. Yeah? I was wondering, the rangers couldn't use a few extra horses, could they? <laughs> I'm sorry, Cal. Our animals have to be specially trained for rough riding and jumping. Also have to be trained not to go wild in fires. <laughs> you know, we have them sent from a government training center when we need replacements. Uh, sure. Well, it was just an idea. Cal, has Mike Baker been over to your ranch lately? Why, I, I don't know, Mrs. Hill. Let's see. Oh, yes, he was over last Saturday. Why? Well, I just wondered if he told you his good news. No, he hasn't. What good news? My sister is his Sunday school teacher, and she was telling me that last Sunday Mike became a Christian. Well, now, that's good. He's a fine boy, you know, loves horses. Oh, yes, I know that. He comes into our shop once in a while looking at saddles and any new equipment we have. Well, now, isn't that nice? Oh, he'll be over to tell me, I'm sure. You know, Cal, I, I think it's going to be a little hard for him at home. Dan Baker is a good farmer, but he can be hard on the boy. I wish I knew why he's so bitter about Christianity. Yes, so do I. I know Mike has never had it very easy. I've been glad he's had the chance to spend time at your place. It's it's a tonic to even hear him talk about horses. <laughs> I bet he lights up your barn every time he comes in it. <laughs> it's good for a kid to be around oh, animals. Yes. Teaches him a lot. And Mike sure knows how to handle them. Too bad he hasn't got a horse of his own, isn't it? But I guess his dad could never afford to get him one. Well, maybe when he's older. Wait a minute. Uh, Bill? Oh, why didn't I think of this before? The baker's got a nice big farm, lots of room. And I owe Mike a lot for all the help he's given me around my ranch. And my stables are overcrowded. You mean you'd give him a horse? Why not? Well... It'd be like an investment. He could still help me around my place on Saturdays like he does anyhow. I've never thought of giving him a cent. He always asked me to let him help. 
One of my animals would get the most love and care of any horse I ever heard of. Oh, Cal, he'll be thrilled. Bill? Bill, don't you think I've got a good idea? What's the matter with you, Bill? You're grinning like a baboon. <clears throat> Cal, I think it's a tremendous idea, really. And it may not be too long before you find out just how tremendous. Well, it isn't as great as all that. Cal, if you're going to give that boy a horse, I suppose we could give him a saddle and all the rigging. Good. I'll drive over to Mr. Baker's tomorrow morning and ask him if it's all right for Mike to have a horse. Mike, you got all the eggs from that end. Uh, put the crate in the pickup. And I'll finish up here and be right with you. Okay, Dan. There, there. That makes twenty dozen. Got your crate in the pickup, Mike? Yeah, Dan. Yeah, that didn't take as so long as I thought. No, it's just a little after ten. Uh, Mike, just a minute uh, before we go back to the house. I... Uh, well, I just wanted to say, I hope now you've got all this religious stuff out of your head. Oh, Dad, I... Now, we made a bargain. You prayed for a horse. Where is it? Yeah, Dad, but if it just... You know, there's no horse and there's no God. Now, this ends. It's son, I mean it. I told you, God doesn't just hand out prizes to anyone who asks for them, Dad. I didn't want to pray for a horse. Mike, you're going to find out soon enough that... Life is full of disappointments. I'm not having you carrying around a pipe dream about God and then someday have it burst, leaving you stranded. It won't burst, Dad. Don't argue with me. Now, you get in the pickup. That you, Mike? Yes, Ma. Mike, I knocked a pile of wood over in the shed. Would you go out and fix it up, please? It's it's blocking the door, so I would like you to do it right away. Sure, Ma. I'll be right back. Oh, hi, Dad. Well, that's one job done for the day. Well, you're early, too. You want to take the feed bags out to the barn? I asked the driver to put them in the yard. I thought it wouldn't be so far to... Oh, who's that coming? Why, it's Cal. He's got his trailer with him. What's he want, I wonder? Well, one way to find out. Hello, Cal. Come on in. It's good to see you. Hello, Dan. Mrs. Baker. Thank you. What's that you got in your trailer, Cal? Well, that's what I came to see you about. Uh, it's a horse. A, a horse? Uh, oh. What's wrong, Dan? I I don't understand. All of them. Well, what about the horse? Well, my stables are awfully overcrowded, and Mike has been helping me out a lot on Saturdays, sometimes after school. He knows a lot about horses, Dan, and I guess you know he sure wants one. I figured, well, if it was all right with you, I'd like to give him one of mine. Mike's, uh, been talking to you, hasn't he, Cal? What do you mean? He didn't ask me for a horse, if that's what you're thinking. But he told you about our bargain. Now look, Dan, I don't have the faintest idea what you're talking about. I haven't seen Mike since last Saturday when he was over helping me load up some feed bags. And he didn't say anything about a bargain. Well, I'm not trying to steal something from you. I'm trying to give you a horse. Well, he hasn't talked to you at all since then? Not at all. And he never hinted about hoping you'd give him a horse? You ought to know your boy well enough to know he wouldn't dream of such a thing, Dan Baker. As a matter of fact, I tried to sell a few of the horses to the rangers, but they couldn't use them. Then I thought of giving one to Mike. She's not one of my best animals, but she's a beauty and would make room for the two new colts I got. You fixed the fence behind the barn for a horse, Dan. Oh, and something else. Mrs. Hill asked me to tell you that she and her husband would be glad to let Mike have one of the saddles from their store and any other rigging Mike needs for the horse. Why would she want to do a thing like that? Why, well, I think you're just to give a boy a little pleasure, Mrs. Baker. Hey, Ma, I... Oh, excuse me. Come in, son. Hello, Mr. Calhoun. Hello, Mike. Well, Dan? You asked for this, Dan. Mike, uh, Cal's got a horse in his trailer. 
says it's for you. For me? Mike, you've helped me a lot in the past. And I know how you love princes. But my stable's getting kind of overcrowded. And I'd like you to be the new owner of princes, if you'd like her. Your dad says it's all right. Dad, Dad, my horse. See, Dad, I told you. I told you, Dad. I just don't understand what's going on. Cal, Dan told Mike that if there was a God, he could prove it by praying for something we could all see. Dan picked a horse for Mike to ask for. He said he'd believe there was a God the day he saw the horse. And she's here. She's here. Come on, Dad. Come on out and see her. Oh, I didn't know. Well, I don't know what to say. Can we go out and see her now? You two go. I'll, I'll be out in a minute. Come on, Mike. We'll get her out of the trailer. Boy, Mr. Calhoun, it sure is swell of you. Uh, Mike, before you go, can I see you a minute? Sure, Dad. I'll be right there, Cal. Now, uh, I'm glad you got your horse all right, son, but you remember one thing. Mr. Calhoun gave you that horse, not God. Oh, Dad, I know God did it. I prayed for a horse, not so's I'd have one, but so's you'd understand that there really is a God. Mr. Calhoun brought the horse, but but God gave him the idea. Else, else, how come Mr. Calhoun never thought to give me a horse before? You run along, Mike. I'll be out in a minute. You know, Dan, those church folk really seem interested in other folk. Oh, I don't know. No, no, Dan, they really do. We both know that Cal could have taken that horse to Center City and he could have got a good price for it, too. Yet he wanted to give it to our boy. And Mrs. Hill, imagine her giving all the rigging to Mike. Just anybody wouldn't do what those folks do. What do you mean, just anybody? You don't have to go to church to do a good turn for someone. You're always working for somebody else. You're beating around the bush, Dan. Maybe I just ought to go along to church with Mike tomorrow. And leave me at home looking like an old heathen? You've never minded looking like an old heathen before, Dan. Well, I'm I'm not having the family broken up now. You mean you won't let us go? I mean, I'm going to. You think I'd break my word to my boy? Well, boys and girls, sometimes God works in surprising ways. And very often he works through people we know best and see all the time. The main thing is to keep trusting in him. Well, see you next week for more adventure with... Ranger Bill! program was produced in the radio studios of the Moody Bible Institute in Chicago.